Hi, I'm Matthew Coast, and uh, I'm the head dating coach and founder over at CommitmentConnection.com. Uh, thanks for being with us today. If you've never been to our channel before, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button. And uh, with me today is Allison Armstrong, who actually happens to be my favorite person who teaches in the women's dating and relationship space. Um, if you've never, <laughs> if, if you've never, if you've never heard of Allison before. Here's what you need to do. Okay, first, pause this video, go to amazon.com, type in <laughs> Keys to the Kingdom, buy that book, and then also buy The Queen's Code. I, uh, wow. I, I read The Queen's Code and I, uh, I cried my way through it. Um, mm. It was really, really, really powerful. She's got some of the most uh, amazing, uh, authentic, um, stuff in the women's dating space to help you really connect with a man and make him feel like, uh, you know, feel like you're really in this together um, and you're moving towards something together. Um, and uh, it's really amazing. So thanks for being with us today, Allison. Wow. Nobody told me I was going to get like a whole refill a tank a tank filler just just by that that was amazing thank you so much i'm i'm thrilled to be here it's a fun conversation commitment we, we call it calculus calculus was a yeah commitment is calculus because it's complicated well it's it's complex rather than complicated it it, I mean, it's you build bridges with calculus and you can't without it, right? Um, and a lot of people just want to go straight to calculus without learning the composite pieces. Mm. You know, calculus is the beginning of the poetry of math, right? And if you can't form sentences yet, you can't go there. And it's one of the things that I love about men. I love, I love how m most men relate to commitment it's it's appropriate to bridge building it's appropriate to lifetimes it's a appropriate to to matching a, a dream to reality right that we're not just in this little happy layover after it's so wonderful and i love him and he loves me but when it right come comes right down to it we make each other miserable <laughs> that that can happen so so uh yeah so so kind of coming off of that um you know what I, I know that there's uh some very um specific ways that uh men and women think about commitment differently um you know what uh what, what do you think some of those differences are between the way that men think and the way that women think about the topic of commitment well, first, I apologize. I thought I'd turned off that noise. Um, oh, boy. Okay. So main ways. Main ways you would start with two, most women, most of the time. So not all women. If you're an exception to this, don't worry about that. To most women, most of the time, love is a sufficient basis for a commitment. If I love you and you love me, well, I mean, that's all you need, right? Just like the song says. So we should commit. And how can you say you love me and not be willing to commit? If you're not willing to commit, you must not love me. So we get into arguments where he's like, yeah, I love you. And I'm not ready to commit. They're separate. No, to most women, it's not separate. Love equals commitment. And that would be the, the first biggest thing. And then the second thing would be, I'm thinking of, I think, I'm thinking of Yoda now, right? And <laughs> don't try, do, right? And women tend to be much more, well, if you really loved me, you would try. Right? Like, well, I'm not sure about being your boyfriend. I, I don't think that's going to work out. We'll try. Right? So it, it happens at all levels of commitment that if you have the right feelings about me, 
the right action is to commit and the right action is to be willing to try. And it's because women don't understand how profoundly the difference is between a way, the way that most men most of the time are aware of l limitation, aware of a limited amount of energy, a limited amount of time, a limited amount of resources, and that if you waste that at a very primal level, the sense is you will die. You, you just, you don't waste energy on trying. You s consciously spend and invest energy on the things that are worth doing that for as much information as you can gather, plus your gut feeling about it, you have a very, very, very good chance of succeeding at it. And that's where the big disconnect is. Because a, a man isn't counting just, do I have a feeling of love, which I'm not sure I trust anyway. And she says she has a feeling of love, but how do I observe that in real life? She says she has a feeling. Okay, bet my life on that? No. How does she show me that she loves me? Very different. Um, the way we say it is men trust facts, not feelings, and facts are observable. Facts come from trusted sources. So men are looking for observable data that indicates this has an incredibly strong chance of working. And every man's different, and you're nodding your head. I love that. It's so much great, Matthew. Every man's different in that the range of investment happening as at this will work because, and there'll be observable reasons, to I'm sure this will work because it has worked, which is one of the most common things for men to say when we asked, we've asked so many men, why did you marry your wife? Well, because we'd been through so much already together, I knew we could get through anything. Right, so a man marries because it has worked, even when it was stressed by real life. It did work. We stayed in the same team. We communicated well. I didn't become the enemy and the bad guy and the problem. Like, you know, there's all this evidence that men look for that it has worked, it will work, it did work in all these circumstances. All right, I'm all in. You're nodding your head. This makes sense, yes? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I you know, it's, it's, I, I, you know, everything that you're saying is just, it, this is one of the reasons why I like you so much. <laughs> I, I mean, really, it's like you, it's almost like you have this, like, almost surreal, mystical understanding about the differences between men and women that just, I mean, it just blows my mind. Wow. Um, and it's, it's really beautiful. And, um, um, you know, and, and, at the same time, you know, when I hear that, it's like, it's, it's, it's great. And, and there's kind of this thing in me where I'm like, okay, well, well, where do we go next? You know what I mean? Where, how do we kind of like bridge this divide? Where do we, um, you know, if, if, I, if I'm a woman, you know, <laughs> I, I like to try to think of like things from, um, you know, our, uh, our community's perspective. Like if I was a woman and um, I'm looking at this thing called man, you know, which, which is, you know, there's this strange kind of communication and understanding mm -hmm. barrier, you know, yes. the, the meanings of these things are different in our minds. Like, how do we, how do we connect through that? How do we, how do we still both get what we want and come through in, into partnership? Well, I love that you said mystical understanding. Um, because I started studying men 27 years ago. And, and a lot of men, when I say that, they're like, are you slow? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> We're simple, so you must be slow. And, and I'm often having to educate men in that you are not simple. Um, if you followed a man around and you could see the outside and the inside at the same time, 
you would realize he's constantly reconciling paradoxes, right? That, that literally every man you meet could be someone that you would feel the need to kill or be completely willing to die for. Every person, you could go either direction, right? Or how extraordinarily beautiful women are to men and how part of being a grown man is that you don't show it. <laughs> that every impulse you have <laughs> to grab her and keep her forever, you just hands at side, tension can be felt in your body as a vibration if somebody's paying really close attention. Um, but your your master concealers and and the more you care, the more you conceal. And what I try to do to bridge the gap is to, to teach women how to see someone who's so different, right? Stop expecting a man to act like a woman or a woman to act like a man and actually, you know, get the wax out of your ears and pull the blinders off your eyes and be curious, right? Be curious about men, be curious about women, be curious about this man, this woman, right? Because we, I mean, oh my gosh, the volumes of information that we have from studying you, we, we can, we have come up with some conclusions. And I, I mean, I think you're mentioning Keys to the Kingdom and the Queen's Code is because some of our most important conclusions are in the stories and then every man, there's a customization. Like we teach women how to ask a man for what she needs. And it's printed out in a handout. We tell her, take it to him <laughs> and say, okay, these are the steps. And if I was doing this the way that worked for you, what, what would it be like? And it's funny, Matthew, because we've had men go, it could not possibly take nine steps to tell a man what you need. That's ridiculous. And then as we go through each step and talk about what happens if you don't do it, they just nod their heads and nod their heads. And, okay, I guess you actually need all those. So the shorter answer, which I'm not very good at short answers, um, how do we bridge it? We have to be curious. We have to, we have to set aside, I know already, um, I think we have to be endlessly curious. I mean, next month is my 25th wedding anniversary. And I'm still curious about who am I married to? Who am I married to as a man? And who am I married to as a person? Who, who are you? And we didn't say that to each other. Who are you? And also, and you, you would already know this from having read those books, the assumption that the other person isn't crazy, isn't a jerk, isn't irresponsible, isn't defending themselves when they're not being attacked, right? The, we have to, we have, we have to grant, we have to, even if it's a risk, we have to grant they're a good person with good reasons and stop saying, why didn't you? <laughs> why don't you? What's wrong with you that you won't commit? <laughs> right? Like, yeah. What's right with you that you won't commit? What are the, I would love to know the legitimate reasons why you won't commit. I'm really curious because they must be smart. If we go that way about it, then, then bridges can build, including finding out the legitimate reason <laughs> that women will drown you in details <laughs> and have to tell you the backstory of their answers. <laughs> what if that, they have a good reason for that too? Yeah. I, you know, um, Man, that that was great. Well said. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, the thing that I really like about what you just said is it's um, it, it's this perspective shift, you know, and it, it's this this new way of looking at things where, um, you know, it, it's funny being in the the women's dating space because it's like, um, uh, you, you know, when I first kind of got in here, 
Um, and one of the reasons why I was drawn so much to your work uh, was because uh, a lot of it's kind of this manipulative, like, you know, I'm going to get what I want. We have to fight each other, you know, until uh, one of us breaks and, you know, I get what I want or, you know, like, or I end up leaving or something, you know what I mean? Something crazy is going to happen here. And, um, you know, when, when we take a second and we think about this other person, it's like, okay, well, this person has... Um, you, you know, uh, theoretically anyway, they've got good intentions. You know, most people, I think what, what, we, what we really want, you know, we, we kind of have this division where it's like, okay, that's a woman, I'm a man, you know, and so I need to get my needs met. And this is the person that I need to get my needs met through. And it's like, really, we're all here on the same journey. You know, we, we all want love. We all want uh, compassion. We all want to feel understood. Um, we all want to get our needs met. And, uh, you know, when we look at it from that perspective and we look at it from this place of like, um, you know, we can build and grow. We can kind of let go of all these things that we think is going on right now and in a, in a, you know, an argument or a, a fight or whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and put on a new perspective, it, it looks and actually, uh, turns into something completely different, you know? Um, and it's, uh, like, I don't know, the, the Queens code keeps popping up in my mind, you know, this, uh, this, um, the, it, if you're not familiar with the books, there are these stories, right? And they're these really, they're really great stories. I love them. Um, and, uh, one, one of the story in the Queens code is about this woman who, um, uh, is, uh, she's, she kind of has this experience of men and when she changes the way that she kind of looks at things and, and changes the way that she, she's doing things, all of a sudden her entire experience of men completely changes, you know, and, and it's, um, it, it's so powerful, like going through that book because you get to the other end and you're just like, I mean, for me, it was really emotional because, uh, you know, I grew up in this space where, um, you know, uh, a lot of the people that a lot of my mentors would tell me like women are, are people to cherish. They're cheap people to love. They're people that are just this beautiful, amazing thing on the planet and you, you need to love them, you know, and then I get into relationships and all of a sudden next thing you know, I'm getting cheated on, you know, like, you know, all these, all these things are happening, you know, and, and it's warping my perspective of what's going on. And, you know, uh, we, I think everybody I've ever talked to is, has had heartbreak in their life, you know, and, and we come out of this heartbreak and, and we have this jaded perspective of, of how things are. And if we keep holding on to this um, perspective that we created, um, it, it uh, we find that it doesn't end up serving us and we get into these patterns. And next thing you know, we're, you know, we're, we're going out there and we're trying to find a person, but everybody's, you know, a bad person or, or we're, we're in this relationship, but you know, he's using me, you know, and, and it's, um, uh, you know, I, what I, what I love about this work is that there's, um, what I love about your work is that there's kind of this barrier to drop and this new space to come from, and this new view of, of men to have. Um, and that from that perspective, I think that there's something great that can come from it. And I think that if we don't take on a perspective of partnership, if we don't take on a perspective of, um, you know, wanting to build this together, and we're holding on to this thing of, I gotta get, you know, I got to make him, I got to, you know, force and coerce and, you know, like just, just beat him down until finally he, you know, submits to me. It's, it's painful for everybody, you know, and, and it's not a long, it's not long-term thinking, um, you know, congratulations on your, your uh, 25th year anniversary. That's really awesome. Yeah. Um, and uh, can I tell you where a lot of that comes from, Matthew? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, since we don't have any much time, are you familiar with the term reticular activator? I, I am. Are you talking about the thing in your mind where you see something? Yeah, it's the quality of our brain where it's searching for our own intentions. And 
and neuroscience is showing us I mean, our brains will literally do whatever they, it can with whatever it's got to fulfill our intentions. It'll, it'll reconfigure itself. But on the, on the simplest level, the reticular activator is the part of our brain that when you decide you want to get a yellow car, all of a sudden it's like yellow cars are everywhere and they're jumping out at you. And it doesn't mean you don't notice the not yellow cars, but the yellow cars are vivid, right? Well, it's the same thing in the way that our brain works for whatever we decide. If we decide men are jerks, then men being jerks is what jumps out at us. And yes, you might notice the occasional wonderful man, right? Like the red car we might notice amongst all the yellow ones. But our brain is literally bringing to our awareness that which we have already decided is true. And unfortunately, and I, I've studied way more about women relating to men than men relating to women, but I've still studied more about men relating to women than almost anybody. Men tend to be more forgiving of women. You have a kind of, I don't know why she did it, but okay, <laughs> where women, we decide why you did it, <laughs> right? We know why you did it. It's because you're selfish. It's because you're emotionally unavailable. It's because you're, we decide. And then our brains collect all kinds of evidence to prove what we decided. And everything gets thrown in the basket and men are like, but, 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 but. And honestly, Matthew, I'm so sorry, but as a woman, we hear your objections as you just trying to justify bad behavior. We, we hear it as a lack of accountability instead of a, hey, let's stand up for the truth here, right? Yeah. And so one of the things that women have collected evidence for, and I was definitely one of them, was that... I have to strategize to get what I need from a man because he either doesn't care about what I need or he's actively withholding it. And it occurs to very few women that, hmm, and this is, this is what I found over all these years, that he actually really does care about what you need and he has no idea what you need because you think he already should know what you need if he especially if he really loved you so you are actively withholding telling him what you need because you shouldn't have to and you're deciding he's not giving you what you need because he doesn't he knows what it is and is actively withholding it or he just doesn't care anyhow and not that maybe he's missing that critical piece of information that says I should spend energy on this because I'm 100% certain she needs it. Let's go. So it, it comes back to where we started, Matthew, that a man doesn't commit to giving a woman an individual need for the same reason he doesn't commit to a lifetime of giving her what she needs. He doesn't have enough information to be certain that that's a really good way to spend his life which is what a lot of women don't take into account, that your time and your energy and your resources, that's all you got. <laughs> that is your life. And if you spend even a moment of your life on me, wow, that's a gift. That's not my right. That's not my entitlement. That's a gift. Maybe we should be appreciating all the gifts you give us instead of, can I say bitching? <laughs> Instead of like complaining and making up false accusations for why you're not. Yeah, man, that's uh, that's some powerful stuff here. We're uh, we're just about out of time. Um, but if you're watching this, uh, here's my recommendation: go back and watch this again. Uh, Allison just delivered some just gold nuggets of information. Um, and uh, if you want to get more information, I know, uh, I know you've got, um, you've got like seminars you can go to, you've got uh, coaches that work for you. Um, I think you even have a, like some, uh, 
uh, community um, on your site, don't you? It's understandingmen.com, right? Yeah, and we have all that. And in the last year, we've put all of our Understanding Men and Understanding Women courses online. So they're being participated in 24 seven, all over the world, literally. Um, so it's all there. You don't even have to get out of your pajamas. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your information. I know the the women watching right now are, are gonna uh, love it. So uh, so thank you so much for being here, and and I really just appreciate you and everything that you do. You're so welcome.